For today's video, I'm gonna diagnose and fix the regular hard crashes while gaming that I've had with this Newegg abs system. And then after that, I'm gonna go to an innocent little local PC shop to try and fix the hotter than a mild afternoon on Venus gaming temps that we've had with the system as cheaply as possible. But before that, it's time for today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by the Elgato Wave 3 USB microphone, which I'm actually using to record this audio. This is what it sounds like when I provocatively whisper into the microphone. The microphone uses a premium condenser capsule that picks up audio in a cardioid polar pattern. The Elgato Wave 3 also has a physical volume gain knob right on the front of the microphone, making it really easy to adjust your levels on the fly. The Elgato Wave 3 also has a capacitive mute button right on the top of the microphone so that you can shout at your neighbors midstream without getting banned on Twitch. So considering the Wave 3's noob-friendly plug-and-play functionality mixed with its excellent audio quality, this is an amazing option for anybody who wants to step up their audio game. Thank you very much, Olgato Wave 3, for sponsoring today's video. Reinstalling Windows. That is almost always my go-to first step to fix pretty much any problem I run into in my day-to-day -day life, and this system is no different. So the first thing that I did when I came back into the office on Monday was make sure that Battlefield 5 was still hard crashing to the desktop more regularly than it normally does. And, well, yeah, it did. 15 minutes into the first session and the game would hard crash to the desktop. Subsequent sessions would crash after about five or six minutes, which is actually the exact same behavior I saw last week while initially testing the system. The first Battlefield 5 session after a cold boot of the system would last the longest, and then subsequent gaming sessions would crash significantly more regularly. This behavior made me think that it was a temperature related issue. Maybe the VRM was overheating, but those temperatures weren't really alarming. At this point, I reinstalled Windows and this is quite anticlimactic, but that fixed it. That was it. It was a problematic Windows install, which it almost always is with pre-builds. After reinstalling Windows, I got 42 minutes into a session of Battlefield 5 without a single hard crash to the desktop, which is more than twice as long as I could get before. Battlefield 5 also didn't hard crash once in any of the subsequent temperature testing I did with the cooling upgrade. So yeah, reinstalling Windows fixed it. So the moral of the story here is if you buy a pre-built, regardless of if you have stability issues or not, I would reinstall Windows on that because it clears out all of the bloatware and it makes the system feel a lot less like it's got Alma living in it. Oh yes, and on a quick side note, in the comment section of the last video, there was quite a lot of concern about the memory configuration and people were saying that that may be the reason for the stability issues. While out of the box, the RAM was clocked at 2666 megahertz with pretty loose timings. They didn't enable any XMP profiles. But just to make sure, I did run memtest for about an hour and 13 minutes without getting a single error. So the memory configuration seems to be fine. But with that, let's go to the local PC shop, buy some things, and then try and fix those hideous temperatures which still persist after the Windows reinstall, because obviously they would. Ah, okay, I am back from the local PC shop where I went looking for upgrades for our pre-built, and considering that it's a small local PC shop, it's a bit like going vegetable shopping at a beet farm, like... Yeah, you're, you're not gonna have much of a choice. However, they did have one of these, which is a Hyper 212 LED. A lot of you may be thinking, but David, it is no longer 2014. We shouldn't be excited about this cooler. But the reason that we're excited about it is because this is actually the best selling cooler on Newegg, still in 2021. And there was some interest in the previous video to test the best selling cooler in the best selling system. So we can do that. And then the other thing that I got was, was uh, two fans, uh, very fancy. These aren't RGB, they just have a static white LED in them, which is gonna be problematic for color matching considering that the Hyper 212 just has a static red LED in it. Um, <laughs> but anyway, we'll worry about that later. What I wanna do with these two fans is use them as intakes in the top of the case, which may be a bit controversial, but considering the fact that the front of that deep cool case chokes those intake fans so hard, I feel like I need to censor the footage of it. The top may be our best bet to get fresh air into this case. 
With that, let's try and fix our little ab system. Okay, uh, as you can see, it was less an aesthetic PC pimpin' that we did than a thoroughly practical pimpin', which, funnily enough, was actually my pimp name back in the day. Uh, but with that out the way, let's fire this up and see how much this helps the gaming temps. Now, unfortunately, we didn't directly do anything to the graphics card's cooler to help with its gaming temperatures, but I'm hoping the fact that we've actually got some fresh air coming into the case through the top, I'm hoping that that's enough to help its temperatures while gaming. But after these tests, we'll take that graphics card apart and see what we can do to improve those temperatures further. Oh, wow. Okay, so it's already way better. While loading before, the CPU would occasionally hit 100 degrees Celsius and now it's it's in the 60s so that's already so much better okay this is about 15 minutes into a gaming session considering that we're working with air coolers everything should be thermally saturated now and well the temperatures haven't really been climbing look at how much better they are we're averaging about in the low 60s in terms of CPU temperatures, which is significantly cooler than the mid to high 80s that we were in before. In terms of graphics card temperatures, it's still running pretty hot. It's not much cooler than before, but it's definitely better than playing jump rope with that 83 degrees Celsius graphics card temperature barrier. In terms of gaming performance, it shouldn't make much of a difference, but those temperatures are looking way better. So with that, let's rip off the graphics card's cooler and see what we can do to help it out. Oh, look at that lonely little heat pipe. This really is a pretty sad cooler for an RTX 2060. And if you look around the front of the card, you can see that the fan shroud and the backplate do block off quite a bit of airflow for that cooler. That's definitely not gonna help. Now, I was kind of thinking that I can just remove the plastic shroud with the fans attached to it and then strap like a 120 millimeter Noctua fan to the cooler. But as you can see, airflow wise, that's not really going to work very well. So let's just repaste the cooler, see what difference that makes. And then we'll see if we can open up the front of the shroud and let some more air escape from that cooler. Now, on first impressions, it looks like that repaste was a great success, dropping two degrees Celsius but the ambient temperature in the room was two degrees lower, so it didn't really help much. But we can still try the shroud thing. And for the final test, I've just removed that stupid plastic backplate from the card. And if you turn the graphics card around, you can see that there's so much more room for hot air to escape that cooler. So yeah, I think this should make a decent difference. Finally, we have some decent temperatures on our graphics card. But the fact that just removing the backplate drops the graphics card temperature by four degrees Celsius is pretty rough. That's a terrible shroud design. In conclusion, I'm actually kind of annoyed at how easy and inexpensive it was to fix the temperature problems on this system. They could have just shipped it with a better cooler, uh, but that is one of the advantages of an SI system over an OEM system. They're much easier to upgrade. You can just replace the cooler with something decent and it fixes one of the fundamental problems of the system. And then finally, in terms of stability, again, after reinstalling Windows on the system, I didn't get a single crash or any form of instability, so that's pretty much been solved. Uh, which brings me to the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please do like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. And until the next video, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.